Today we will be getting all 25 gems in Colin's Crown. I better give this one some commentary because it might take a really long time to do. You can ignore the timer by the side if four hours is incredibly optimistic. If we can get under five hours, then I'll be very happy. If we get under five and a half, I'll still probably submit it. If you're here just looking for how to get all the gems, I'll link a cheat sheet in the description of how to unlock everything. Otherwise, I'm going to go through collecting all the gems. I'm going to do a 24 run first, and then I'm going to try and get the last one. You're here for the lore. That's Dazzle. She needs to complete the crown to become the queen. But they've lost all the gems. She's going to ask her friends to help. Not quite right. She's going to search the castle first. And when she can't find them, the gems in the castle, she's going to ask her friends to search the entire kingdom and fight some feeds to try and get the rest of them. Definitely pulling away as royalty there. This is this is an unskippable cutscene, so it's unskippable the first time you reset erase the data. Glade. So the first trick that I'm trying is to set up the RNG. I'm doing a banner setup. So the, the RNG in this game is completely determined by how long you spend in menus. Almost completely determined. So I'm trying to spend exactly the right number of frames in the main menu. That was too early. What I'm looking for is the banner opening just to the end of the E before we enter flash columns. Way too late. This isn't the same as the setup I did for the Flash Plums run. That used survival mode first. Uh, the survival setup lets you set up pretty much any any sequence you want. Just using the banner setup really limits the sequences that you can go for. But we're gonna do this five times in the run, so way too late. <laughs> we we need the consistency. So as I fail like the fourth, fifth. Hopefully I'll get it under two minutes. It's slightly too late again. This does save a lot of time compared to working out flash columns normally. Usually that takes between sort of 40 minutes and an hour. Um, if you know the route that you're running, it usually takes less than 30 minutes. That's the right, right seed. We're going to be playing with Ruby in this because she has the most angry sprites. So, the way the RNG works in this game is basically there's a set sequence. And the time you spend in menus determines how far along that sequence you get offset. The other piece of random in this, in flash columns, is determined on how long you spend on each stage intro. So if you get if you skip the stage intro on the first frame, you get different colours compared to if you skip the stage intro on the second frame. Uh, I'm working around that by not skipping stage intros on any of the stages that have random colour variations. That's any stage that's not a multiple of 5 or 5 plus 1. I did go skip the, skip, skip the stage intro on the first stage because it's an easy stage. It usually saves more time to skip it than you do 
by knowing the route anyway. Yeah, so unlike my other runs, I'm gonna record audio for this one. Just because it's an insanely long time to have no audio explaining what's going on. It's going to be a mixture of audio recorded in post and at the time. Because otherwise there'd be really large gaps of silence where I'm trying to concentrate and listen to audio cues. And here we got our first gem, which is up, which was a gem that we already had anyway, but we need to do it to get to the other stages. We get 10 gems from doing this. Um, there are 25 gems in the whole game. If we, if we get to the end of it, in less than six hours, I will demo the last gem and get to the final line of dialogue that you can get in the entire game. Just so that I can show that off. Unlike the Flash Columns run I did for the speed run, I do not know the route for this as well. I practiced that other one a lot, so. I basically knew everything by muscle memory, which isn't the case here. I'm checking my notes, but I'm probably going to make some slip ups at some point. Which I've already done in there. One of the nice things about flash columns is that if you do make a mistake, you can usually recover. And if you can't recover, you can just restart the level over. The RNG for each stage is completely independent from each other. So if you mess up one stage, you don't really lose anything other than the time you spent on that stage already. and you get another shot at doing exactly the same inputs. To be honest, it's one of the reasons I so heavily rooted this to use loads of flash columns. I know that I mess up. And I know that I'm going to mess up survival mode at some point, so... It's the one that I've had least practice on, and it's the one is the one that it's most important not to panic. I'm pretty bad at panicking. Or just losing focus halfway through. We start off with up and speed and stage five gave us up. Here on stage 10, we're getting our first new gem, which is going to be Quake. This is quite a nice stage. But I'm struggling to remember any of these stages. I think I need another orange here.
Most early stages are fairly nice actually. So in the whole run I'll be doing two entire runs flash columns and then three more partial runs. There's 10 unique gems you get from flash columns, but it turns into a bit of a collectathon at the end, and we need to try and get as many gems as we can as quickly as possible. And with set RNG, that is delete. With set RNG getting gems and flash columns, probably the fastest way to do it. Well, it's probably the fastest way to do it that's not CP uh, link battle mode. But I'm not sure... I have to use link battle mode at least once. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to use it another time. It would speed things up, but it's, it's a bit temperamental. If you drop the connection multiple times, you can end up losing a lot of time on it. And so I'll have to see. I'll, I'll give it a go. But if I fail once and resetting everything doesn't help, then I think I've messed this one up. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to have to reset this one. There will be a lot of mistakes in this run. I do not know this Flash Columns run particularly well um, but as I said the nice thing about flash columns is if you reset the level same drop sequence same length of time you watch the intro then you get exactly the same RNG but usually the stage will be different but you can see it's exactly the same stage I just had that's what I was meant to do no, I just need another orange. I was meant to rotate that one. Um, I probably made that quite difficult for myself. Can I try this one. It's not. It's not too difficult. But I think I might have. I might be worth resetting at this point. Yeah, I'll reset. If I make a mistake again, I'll just work it out because this level is not too bad. The key to destroying pretty much all the large columns you get in flash columns is destroying, well, for example, here you destroy two of the greens so that those oranges destroy each other. And that lowers the columns very quickly. Um, yeah, I do remember this one. I'm supposed to get another purple. Yeah, perfect.
Page 20. Um, for this one we're getting wool. Which would be one of the most useful gems to use in versus mode, if not for the next gem that we're about to get. Well, like slightly. Why are we getting Ruby? Um, the main reason we're getting her is because she has she gets exchanged at level 25, which is one of the most useful gems for taking out the CPU quickly. It's one that Alchemist doesn't get without beating CPU, so... I think Alchemist gets exchange fighting against all the CPU, then losing once to Pinch, and then defeating Pinch. Which means he can't use exchange the first time you fight the CP with uh, the boy. You can use walls, but it's he does start off with three. It's a little slow. It's it's slower than Ruby's ups, to be honest. Well, it's theoretically faster, but in practice it's slower. Unless you can do RNG manipulation, which um, you can do for CPU, but it's it's really difficult. You need, you need to do each level, you need to play exactly perfectly, and then you need a frame perfect click between every CPU, and two frame perfect clicks before before you even start fighting them. There we go, that's its change. So it probably takes several probably take me like several hundred attempts just to get one that strong against the CPU. And it would only save like a few minutes anyway, so. With its change, you pretty much get that speed anyway. If you use it correctly. They just start to get slightly trickier as you go on. Not all of them, but they become more time consuming. Yep, just the blue. Here we are well on our way to getting the gem from level 30, which should be freeze. Yeah. I did consider doing this run as Alchemist because it means when you do the Flash Clone run, then you can. Oh god, what's going on here? notes are wrong. Okay, either I misread them or they're wrong. I'll try, I'll try going by my notes one more time. And if I still mess it up, then 
I'll just work out how to do it normally. Yeah, I didn't misread them. Yeah, they're just... I must... Should I double check them before I... Did them? I practiced this several times earlier. Yeah, so I'm not giving up today until I actually get it. I'm gonna keep on trying until I get this run done. There we go. I was in danger of having to actually work out the entire solution to that one. Stage 31. So we're getting to some of the longer stages now. We're just over halfway through. Which reminds me, there's actually another reason why we do flash comes first, which is... Yep. So, if you do it last, after getting all the other gems, you can crash the game. You can get stuck in an infinite menu loading screen, so... There's another reason why we do flash comes first, other than to get exchange. And to reset if you really mess up the opening RNG manipulation. Nice. I'm going to have to concentrate slightly more on these stages. Not that I'm being particularly entertaining anyway. I don't have the energetic voice or the story times or anything. See, this stage is one that is... I think I've messed up there. Yeah. Stage is one that's normally quite hard casually. No, that's, that's right. <laughs> that's okay. Normally quite hard casually unless you get exactly the right drops. But it's quite quick if you have things that drop quite quickly. What am I even saying? It's quite quick if you have the right colours. But it also points to one of the reasons that these seeds are quite bad. So... I've listed out the first thousand drops that you can get. Which includes the sequences, all the sequences that you can get from banner selection to start off with. And one of the reasons that any of the sequences you can get around that point are so bad is there aren't many greens. You can see here we have to wait quite a long time to get some green gems. When we do get them, two come at once, but there's not a good distribution of colours. Which makes some of the strategies that we have to do quite difficult. Or at least we have to work around the fact that we aren't going to get any greens early. Thirty-five. Thirty-five is vacuum. <laughs> I 
I don't have the energy, but I do have uh, the voice of a 12 year old YouTube tech support person. So I've got that going for me. I think this is a long stage. I think it's when you get a lot of time for. Yeah, this is usually quite a quick stage. But again, we have to work around the lack of greens. In most cases, I can use existing greens on the field to burst things, but otherwise we have to wait until the point where we get more greens. I think there is a green at like 207 or something, 208. But I couldn't reliably get that RNG. 38 is another one of those really nasty stages to do casually. Yeah, and I've definitely deviated from my route at this point, but I think I think we're gonna be okay. This stage is actually a lot nicer than it looks initially. Let me see why in a second. There. You can get that the five dice pattern. It will burst it almost immediately. Yeah, I'm off script again. I don't mean audio script, I mean band read. Blue gem, what gem is that? That is, that's speed, um, which is one of our starting gems anyway. That's one of the reasons that when we replay this, we're going to replay up to 35 because there's no point going 40 more than twice because you can only get five gems of each type. So after we've run flash comms twice, we're going to have maxed out the number of speeds and the number of ups we can get. Lack of greens isn't just a problem if there's green gems we need to burst, it's also like a problem if there's a lot of green gems in the field. One of the reasons that I think 209 might be a much better seed, initially I thought it wouldn't be much better because it starts off with a purple and there's you've exactly the same green problem, but it looks like, at least when I was looking through it quickly, a lot of the stages that get generated are have less greens in them. That's one idea I've got for saving quite a bit of time in future runs of this. This is one of the longer stages. 
actually appears twice with slightly different playthrough. This is the first time it appears and that's why I made up that's why when I did the flash comes run I made a mistake in the later version because I was still remembering the play that you do on this version of stage. Now I just have to wait for more greens. Oh, there we go. It's not too bad. You don't, you don't get out of greens for ages. It's just there's quite a few drops right at the start that don't have any greens in. Stage 45, so <laughs> this one's one of the one of the only challenge stages that actually can throw me. You have to put it right over the side and it's quite a lot of places you can burst it. Green gem, that is copy that we're getting. Stage 45. Again, the lack of greens is the problem here. But this is a static stage, so you always need greens to burst that one. And there's no way to do it with the existing gems of the field. This is a stage where if you panic, then actually 47 and 49 are stages where if you panic, you can really mess it up, but they're, they're not too bad. I think 48 is the duplicate one that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, you can see it's the same as that other stage, it's just everything's moved down a bit. It's probably less obvious if you're viewing it, but if you're doing the, if you're doing all the gem movements, then it's quite obvious that you're doing exactly the same thing. Again, probably not something you notice on a casual playthrough because, assuming you skip the stage intros on different frames, you're not going to have the same. You don't have the same stage colorings. You probably won't notice the patterns being repeated. <laughs> stage 49. This is the one where it's very easy to die a few times, but if you just calm down and look at it quite quickly, then it's nearly always quite easy to get through. Okay, so that's our first gem gems. That last one there was Meteor. We're about to have a credits intermission. The credits was one of the reasons that I wanted to root Flashcons to the end initially. 
because after you collect all 24 gems, you always get the credits playing, regardless of what mode you play. So if you played Flash Columns or Versus mode as the last one, then you can save time by not sitting through the credits one more time. <laughs> you double up the credits from the from the stages you're playing with the 24 gem collection credits. Unfortunately, it wasn't really realistic, partly because Flash Cons crashes. Or it doesn't always crash. I've experienced that actually a few times playing it. And I didn't want to root CPU mode to the last one because CPUs change gems depending on how many unique gems your character has. Oh, audio. I'm trying to set up link mode right now. It's not always easy. Okay, um, we'll see if it works. Sometimes it disconnects my controllers. This is one of the gems that people often don't get. This is the way to get one more with Ruby, and I think it gets ZZZ with Alchemist. And here we see the alternate colour palette for Ruby, which is the pink dress. Much better than Alchemist's alternate colour palette, which I, palette, which I think is just an orange shirt. I think we'll be okay now for at least these four battles. Uh, you have to win five times in a row to get the gem. I really want to show off the single link battle. So you can get this gem winning five link battles in a row on either single link battle or two player link battles. You don't actually need two cartridges to get this gem. You just need two Game Boys that are compatible with the um, link cables. So you can't use DS. I want to show off the single one because it's the only place in the game where you get the the desert beach background. Kind of a minor heart attack there. If it gets stuck on that please wait screen then it means the connection's dropped and you have to re- I'm running here on an emulator, you have to restart the entire emulator if the connection ever drops. You can't just reload the ROM. I tried several emulators to get this uh, link battles properly working. I think, I think the game just has really dodgy multiplayer. They also do some really cool stuff in the sing in the um, single link player battle, where they they cut down data, like they cut down the background on the gem selection screen, and they cut down all the animations. And I'm pretty sure the reason they had that different background is that it can use an index palette and have reduced space. So it's really cool, which is why I wanted to show off, but we're just going to have to make do with alternate colour palette characters. Ready, Maybe I'll put the desert beach in the thumbnail. It's a really cool background. It's a shame it only gets used in one place. There we go, five wins. I think this is one of the gems that people don't usually get because you have to beat a friend five times in a row and have them not quit on you. That's good that we didn't get any breaks in the Link Battle stuff there. I'll come back to it later, but I think I'm probably pushing my luck if I try and do multiple multiplayer stuff in a row. Okay, CPU versus mode. CP versus mode is probably the only one I've got realistic timings for. We need to do it twice to get all the gems, and I put 15 minutes. I put myself 15 minutes for each one. Yeah. Okay, exchange first. We're good. Ready? 
different menu game, we've got someone who's recently broken the 10 minute barrier, which is quite exciting. I've done it before, but only in segmented segmented runs, so seeing someone actually get it in a, in a full run is pretty exciting. But now that we have exchange, we can do this a lot more quickly, a lot quicker. So to do this, we're going to be exploiting one of the CPU's mechanics, or rather, we're going to be exploiting the CPU AI. There's a few things to bear in mind when playing uh, versus mode. You want to get the gems as quickly as possible, which is slightly faster if you burst in the centre and if you get your columns quite high up, so it's high risk, high reward. But the main thing that speeds up CPU is stunning them. And so the way the AI calculates where to drop it um, it does it before the CPU even starts placing anything. And when a gem gets cast, it returns any CP any gems your opponent is dropping right back up to the starting position. That's good for us because the CPU never recalculates whether their drop is still a good one to do. But I'm going to cast exchange their gem is going to go right back to its starting position and then they're going to try and drop it in exactly the same position they will they did before we exchanged the boards. It's a little difficult to explain but you'll see what I mean. Um, so the ideal way to do this would be to wait until the DP is trying to drop into the centre and then exchange a board that has a really high centre column. I'm doing a slightly safer strategy here because the CPU always tries to avoid the centre column if they can. So I'm raising up one side and then I'm giving them a high centre column as well. So there you can see, assuming that she was going to drop on the left, that would have always won. That would have always beaten her. And if she wasn't, I just needed to wait until she was going to drop on the left. As long as she hadn't landed it. When I exchanged boards, she'd always try and drop it on the left again, and it would always hit the side wall. One of the reasons that wall is a really useful gem as well, because you can... You can block off where they've begun to drop it. And if you do it at the right timing, then... You can basically guarantee raising the centre column by three. It's what you do for the alchemist runs. That's why I said Alchemist is theoretically slightly faster than Sorceress, because although she can raise, she starts off with three ups, which can raise the columns by two each time, whereas Alchemist can raise it by three, but only in the centre, yes. if you play things correctly. That was triple that we just got there. So our, the robot and Jinx, you have to beat first try to get the gem. Zevro, you can, you can die and continue against Zevro and it will still give you the gem. And then Pinch is the one where it gets slightly tricky. The other thing you have to know about Wool for the Alchemist run is you can actually control which side it lands on. It's the direction you're pressing when the animation plays. The Wool animation controls which side it gets sent to you. Which isn't something that the game lists anywhere or even tells you. I did not mean to burst that then. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yes. 
I mean, I was about to press it anyway, but... Uh, which gem is that? That's yellow from Zevro. This is a really good pace. Yeah, and one of the other reasons we're doing CP versus mode with exactly 11 gems is if you do it with more gems, then Zevro will use Flash, will use Vacuum as their first gem. If you do it with less gems, then Jinx can use Vacuum as her first gem. It's not a massive problem, but it just slows you down a lot. To be a little careful here. Oh, do we have enough? Yeah. I'm gonna give her a board that won't immediately kill her. I can get that up though. Oh, she's already already gone. I think I'm on like close to a record pace here. That, that is Jinx, obviously, we get from Jinx. Fun fact, it's called Hell in the Japanese version. Version is one of the three that they... One of the three that they changed in the localization. Um, Triple got called Press, and... Paralyze got called... Arai. Which is the only one where the artwork changes in the gem. Because instead of dropping a rock, they drop a wash basin. Which I always find quite funny. You get to pinch who is the first person to use on you. You're having a fight in a volcano. She drops a wash basin on your head to win. That is. that's bad. Getting a stranger's three of a kind means you can't avoid using it. I'm going to try and win this anyway, but she's about to use extra and then up, and I don't have a good counter for this. Although that's okay, because I'll play it risky, because if we lose, it's still fine. We have to lose to pinch at some point. Yeah, I think I'm doing wall and then up, but I probably won't. I probably won't get two ups before she gets another X2 and either up or paralyze. Or meteor. Well, that's going to screw me over anywhere if she gets it. I've not been playing defensively. You can't if you want to do it quickly. Oh, paralyzed if she gets that. And there goes my up. I think I think we've probably lost this one, but that's that's okay. Now let's play why. The reason we have to do CP mode twice is you get different gems. So that whole battle is like a time loss for the time that we actually spent playing it. But you get different gems depending on whether you beat her on your first try or whether you beat her on your... Well, it doesn't matter which try you do it. As long as you've used one continue, you'll get a different gem. <laughs> There's three gems people often have a hard time getting, which is the multiplayer gems, uh, paralyze, and this gem. I think this gem they put in is like a punishment for rage quitters.
So if you beat her not using any continues, you get question mark. And if you beat her using a continue, you get barrier. Uh, with Ruby, you get exchange if you beat her with no... If you beat her with continues, with alchemist, you get exchange. There we go. <laughs> if you beat her without any continues using Alchemist, you get a copy, I think. Oh no, she was the secret feat. Who knows who will murder victorious next time? Yeah. So we're gonna have to jump straight back in and next time we're gonna have to beat her without any continues. Why try and do it beating her the first time just so that I know that I'm safe for the second? It's a good time for a drink. <laughs> Credits. Yeah, so most people are missing sort of one or two gems from this game. If they're missing Barrier with Ruby, you know that they didn't... They didn't be Pinch if they... Have a lost against her. Mm, I might play slightly safer tactics against the fast CPU this time. It doesn't matter if we lose against Severo, you still get the gem, but it does against the robot and Jinx, and it will matter against Pinch this time. It matters more against Pinch because we need that unique gem, but the others... The others are good to get because we need 80 gems by the end of this run. So it's good to collect them now if we can. Dead weight, very cool. There we go. Now you just got terrible board. Good that we avoid him getting Quake though. I'm running on the European edition so you can read the cutscenes. But the Japanese one is the only one that Quake properly works on when using an emulator. On the US and European editions, it doesn't it doesn't quite display properly. I tried with them without biases, it just didn't get it working.
one of the downsides to it, strange. If you if you play well and you get it quickly, then it means you're giving them a good field. Why so try and pair it with the the blocking the moss strategies, the IA exploits. The annoying thing about the AI exploit for wall is there's a few frame window where if you play it just as they're putting the gem onto the field, they will put it inside your wall. And it completely wastes your wall. It's really annoying when it happens, because you can have a good run and then it can get killed by playing on just the wrong frame. You can avoid it, at least against the slow CPUs, but you have to time it till either before they've started dropping the gem, in which case you don't know where they're going to drop it, or later until they're about to drop it. But that's hard against the hard against the fast CPUs because by the time you see where they're going to drop it, <laughs> they've usually already dropped it. You can often guess where they're going to drop it. So the CP tends to avoid the center column. Um, and apart from that, it usually drops, drops left to right. Filling up the lowest columns, unless they have a burst that they can do. In which case, it's kind of anyone's guess. I don't know if the logic for whether they go for a burst or not is something they can calculate that a human can calculate. It's entirely deterministic. If it wasn't, then RNG manipulation for the CPU route would be impossible. Or maybe TAS only. But for a set drop sequence, the CPU will play the same same moves every time. Did not mean to burst that there. That was really stupid. Um, I gave him a better board. Now he's going to use up. Uh, this could be funny though. Yeah, just thinking about the gems he had, I knew he has its exchange coming. He's going to use up on me, and then we get a bit lucky. He'll exchange his... He'll exchange my terrible board for his. And then I can use up. Kind of useful here, though. Oh, that's fine, he's got barrier up. Barrier only lasts about 20 seconds, that's another thing they haven't... <laughs> you don't learn about the gem. It never says it. Thank you, I'll take that. I used to get so confused, I never knew why Barrier is working sometimes and not working other times, but... Now I know it's very temporary. Can still kill a run because one of the CP versus runs because you have to wait for it to wear off. So all the gems we're getting here are exactly the same ones, except against Pinch. Mm, seven minutes is not terrible. It's not a good. It's not a good time. Oh, 
all new game. Anything under 15 minutes is all right. For new game plus, where you can use any gems you want, then ideally you're aiming for under 10 minutes. If you want to make a good time. This is not a great. Okay, I'm about to give you the board, so <laughs> do what you want. An upside down win. The point it doesn't turn the win upside down. Okay, for safety, I'm thinking that I'll wait until she's used exchange X2 and up on my board before I use exchange. And then I can put Jinx in if I really need it. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be more than ten minutes. Not a great time. There's a lot of time saves. Just small time saves that you can make at the moment. I definitely not getting anywhere near the four hour mark even with all those time saves, but Yeah, I'll just exchange even though it's not a great time. Well, she didn't use X2. Don't mind if I do. Let's get X2 Jinx. Oh, that's going to completely mess her over. And there we go. Perfect. So that's going to give us question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm still surprised the second time. Yeah, he knows who win next time. Perfect, eight gems left, which is all the gems from survivor mode. Well, actually nine gems left, but we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, so I'm just using these credits for a quick drink. It's amazing how dry your throat can get when you're speaking for so long. It's survival mode up next. And I'll be going for X2 first. So just to explain what I'm doing here, I'm Dropping all the gems and not rotating any of them to see if I get any burst. And if I do get a burst, that means that there's a three in a row somewhere already in the sequence, which means you can just do continues until that 
gets bumped up to the first element in the sequence. If I don't see any three in a rows in the first few drops, then I have to go back to the main menu and just re-roll the RNG for seed. The reason we're doing this to get X2 is because X2 is unlocked by clearing the board completely in survivor mode. And the easiest way to do that is if the first gem that you get is a three of a kind. So you put something on the board and it immediately clears. Usually not too bad, but sometimes it can take a while to get X2s. Getting multiple X2s could potentially pretty... I'm going to reset um, and try and force the RNG for this. I'm not great at the timings, but I've done a little bit of practice. I think it's full banner, half banner. The seed went back to zero and... That might be okay. The resetting brings the seed back to zero and then you can try and... Oh, that is almost perfect. You see, three of a kind was the second in the was the second in the sequence there. So, if I do one continue, that will move the sequence along one gem, and the three of a kind will be the first gem that gets gets burst. That was actually that was more luck than skill getting that first try. I did a bit of practice before this, but I usually don't, don't get the timings for those. Okay, so just explaining what I did there. Uh, when you play in easy mode, if you stack a high tower, it will instantaneously um, it will instantaneously give you full magic. And then I burst the magic gem on nothing because apparently that's the most effective way to use them. So usually to get a high magic score, um, you burst as many gems as you can with. I've oh, got my five link there as well. The five chain will give us invisible, um, which means we've got two of the gems we need to get from survival mode already. Uh, back to the magic gems. <laughs> so there's five areas that you have to get good scores in to increase the ranks quickly. And that's not based on how many gems got to get burst. So a few things you want to concentrate on are making chains, um, getting three of a kinds, which will increase your luck value, and effectively using magic gems. And the, the old strat for this was to make a really high tower and then place your magic gem on the top of the high tower and that lets you use it twice because if it goes outside the edge of the field then it no gems that go outside of the edge of the field um, burst. So if you place it so that the top one goes off the top then you get to use it a second time in a row. I thought for a while that was the most effective way to use the magic gems. Because it gives you points, usually based on how many you manage to destroy. So you're trying to place it on a gem that has that you have a lot of on the field. But I was watching one of the YouTube videos, I think it was, I'm going to butcher the name, Lila Ashura? And they got like a ridiculous time score for getting master in survival mode. And I looked at what they did, and the very first time they got a magic gem, they'd 
burst it on an empty square. I, I can only assume what happens is because you're bursting it on nothing, and most of the squares on your field have nothing in, it's giving you points for all the squares that have nothing in. I, I assume that's what's happening, because when I checked it, bursting your magic gems on nothing gives you an almost instantaneously really good magic score. Really good for the speedrun, actually, because it... Otherwise, the limitations on when you could get master would probably be based on how often you could get magic gems, and you're pretty limited when you can get them. It's based on number of jewels burst, and that goes up exponentially. So being able to max out your magic meter early lets you speed up the survivor run quite a bit. If you're wondering what gem we got for the C plus ranking, I think that was laser. I'm really hoping not to mess up survival mode at any point here because it is the one that I mess up a lot of. It's not bad when I'm playing normally, so when I was playing this casually I used to play a lot and I'd have no problems getting to like high 100s. I think the max level is 909, but the highest I've ever got to is about 200. The problem is when you're trying to try, when you're playing to try and get a high ranking quickly, you have to change the style you're playing with a bit. Not only are you wasting the magic gems, I'm going to do a double use here. You can see what that looks like. The top one got went off the top of the screen, so I got to use it twice. I might go for Paralyze soon. It is. a good jump to go for when you need a bathroom break. Which I don't need at the moment, but. it's kind of like when. when you're on like a road trip and your parents are like. even if you don't need to go, you should go now. <laughs> because. it's really the only chance you get for like a a long break in the entire 5-6 hour run. I can't remember what I was talking about. Oh yeah, survival mode. When you're playing normally it's a lot easier to play than when you're trying to get high ranking. Trying to build up chains is a killer because if you start building up chains and then you miss something or you accidentally do a burst, you can end up with loads of gems on the field. No easy way to get rid of them. I'm coming up to rank B, which will give me reverse. I did want to wait a bit for Paralyze because if I need to get a second one, it will be easier if I get the first later on. I'll explain the Paralyze stuff for a minute because I think Paralyze is the third gem that a lot of people have problems getting. Yep, that's reverse. I 
don't want to. I don't want to get paralyzed when the field's too high. I might try and clear it a bit first. I'm nearly at magic gems. So that will be a good. <laughs> that will give me a good opportunity to clear the field before. We're going for paralytes. But I'm drinking loads, but my throat still gets dry. He's terrible at speaking. This mic's not great either. It's a really cheap microphone. I was trying to up the bass on it, but it still probably sounds very terribly. Not that I have like any audio skills. I don't know how to set up a mic properly. I need a few more bursts to get that. Okay, back in a sec. Oh, I'm still muted. I should probably have explained before I left. Um, this is all part of getting paralyzed. So one of the important things of getting it is leaving the game paused in survival mode for three minutes. I really like they gave you enough time to like do everything, like wash your hands and stuff. So it's one of these gems that a lot of people get and then they can't remember or they don't realise where they got it because they paused the game, they left it somewhere. And when they came back they had the gem without realising it.
even if you don't leave the game and you do realize that pausing it get up there's a couple of other conditions for getting paralyzed there we go paralyzed so i don't think it's possible to get it if you pause while in the first area so the the green town i think you have to green village i think you have to at least get to the town before it will let you let you pause to get it and i don't think you can use it I don't think you can pause in the same area twice, so I think you have to change areas if you want the second one. Which is why I didn't get it immediately. It's why I waited till a later area, so that if I do need to go back and get a second paralyzed later, then I can get it in one of the earlier stages and not waste as much time. But I probably won't. If I can avoid it, because three minutes is quite a long time to wait. Like, there are a lot better, quicker ways to get gems, usually. That's only if I get really stuck. But one of the quick ways to get it might be doing early town. So you can actually get to the second area while you're still on level one. Because the backgrounds are dependent on where you're scoring in the rankings. So there's a couple I explained some of the ways to get it, but if you get a five or higher chain early on and you burst the early magic gem on empty by using easy mode and stacking a high column to get it without bursting any gems then you only need to like max out your luck in order to get to the town and you can max out your luck if you start off with two three of a kinds in a row i don't think there's anywhere in the sequence at least there's nowhere in the early sequence that you can get three three of a kinds in a row that was great i think I've written that down as A plus in my notes. I think it's A minus now. Well, I've just got A minus, so it must be. Let me just update those. Wow, well, make a note. Update those after the run. I'm not in a position where I can write down stuff now. There's two three of a kind. So if you start off with those in the sequence, you can get an instantly really good luck score as well. I always worry about not being able to double use those magic gems. Mostly from when I was doing old runs and before I would realised that doing the magic burst on empty was a good way to max out the magic meter. 
Because if you miss the double burst for magic gems then, you could end up going into the hundreds um, before you get master ranking. Ishii didn't. Usually you can get it by about level 70. But with magic no longer being a limiting factor, you can still get it. You can get it into the early 50s. So it is a lot quicker. You get to a point where, like, all the strategy goes out the window, you just, you see a burst, and then you're looking for the next, the next burst you can try and hit. Oh, that colour. That's why I try and get all the chains done early, because there's no way that I'd, I'd manage chains later on. Not on purpose, at least. Perfect timing. Is that grey? What did I get on A minus then? A minus must have been Z Z Z. Because I didn't get anything on A rank. A lot of the gem things I just know, but some of them you usually get both at the same time. In the case of this where I got ZZZ first on A- minus and Grey on A+, plus, I usually get them both in the same survival mode run, so I think that's which ones were which, but <laughs> I'd have to. Oh no. This isn't great. I might die here. I'm still a little bit a little bit away from magic.
Yeah, that is unfortunate. It's not a total time loss. In fact, we just got A plus rank, so probably only about a minute loss. So, ideally, there uh, for the run, we would have gone to Master. Uh, and that will give us Nova, which is the last gem that's remaining. But for the 25 gem run, we have to play it multiple times anyway, so... Given that I just got a gem, it's not the route that I would have chosen, and I'll probably have to rework out the routing. But it's not the end of the world. It would it would be really bad for a 24 gem run. But for 25 gems, we have to play everything multiple times. Uh, because you need 80 gems in total. If I mess up like that later in the run, then it could be a massive problem. massive time loss but for now until we have enough gems collected it's okay not not terrible i think next time i might keep a spreadsheet of which gems that i've got just to help me routing if i do make a mistake like that because I now don't know how many gems that I've got. Usually you win the 24 run with 33 gems. But I'll have played an extra. An extra round of survival up to A plus now. I'm really bad at trying to make chains. I was thinking that if I can get another five chain. What's that? Only three. I can get another five chain it would save time because that's that's an additional gem that I won't have to collect later but I don't want to play too riskily because I really don't want to don't want to mess up twice. Though I do look like I'm doing a really good job of messing up, so... It's okay, it's only level 6. And... Oh no, I can definitely fix this. It's getting 3s. Sometimes they start making a chain and then I just forget. Where I am in it. Five chain, no, another three chain. If it's at the very start, I usually pan chains to get the five chain, but
it's way easier to do when you have an empty board. Five question mark? No, another three. Get a lot of threes. But the moment you have lots of gems on the field and things are moving faster, you just have to kind of hope. I don't know, like, if I was skilled I could probably do it, but... I do not have the necessary skills to play and think at the same time. I can do one or the other. This might not be a great use of magic because there are not that many orange shums in the field. All black gems, it would have been better to get a green. No, my split's going to be really messed up now as well because <laughs> this was not this was not the route I planned on doing. I planned on getting the 24 gems first and then then going back to get back to all the gems. Are we split now? I think I will wait. But then all my splits are going to look red for ages. Well, they were going to look red anyway. Move that out of the way. using Vader Tube for the icon, it was the only thing I could get working quickly. It's fairly lightweight and doesn't it doesn't kill my PC when I'm also running things like the games. Lots of chains, still no fires. Where do you go from the village to the town, then underwater? Then evening town and sky then space. Underworld is really the odd one out there. I keep hitting things on my computer. I'm not playing with my keyboard, I am playing with the controller, but it's... That's not bad use of magic.
really need to stop clicking things. So many three right. One of five. Give me gems. In case you're wondering, you can only get one of each gem per per go in survival mode, so now that I've drawn it twice, I can re get gems, but there's no benefit in getting multiple five chains in the same same run. It's not just five chains, it's any chain that's greater than five. Or five or greater. Yeah, so I was really struggling to find a good controller to play this with. Look at those controllers, what are they called? The... I can't remember the name of them now. They're really popular for retro games, but... The only one I could buy was a wireless one, and I really didn't want a wireless controller for the input lag for this. So I've ended up with a wired Switch Pro controller, but the D-pad isn't great. So the D-pad isn't great, it's silicon D-pad. And they're great for like 3D games, but... For games like this, where you want really precise input, I much prefer... I much prefer a D-pad where you've got like a clicky button. And you can tell exactly how many times you clicked it. Particularly as a lot of the inputs here are quite precise. And like, you can't start moving the drums over until it's already on the field, but then once it's on the field you want to click it a certain number of times. Actually, not, not the strategies I'm doing here, I was sort of working around that. Which is what I did on the GBA anyway. Putting it onto a high column first and then sliding it over. But you can't do that if you're trying to drop it on a column that doesn't have any high columns next to it. I was hoping there'd be a way to use the SP as a controller for the computer, because I know with the GBA player you can use it on the GameCube. This is a link cable that plugs into the back of a Game Boy and it lets you plug it into a GameCube slot. And then there's a adapter that lets you put GameCube GameCube controllers into a USB. Yeah, that's definitely a minus. I'm going to have to update that. Oh, just... Nearly missed a uh, two bursts then for that magic gem. But it doesn't look like anyone's written any software for
allowing a game which we used to control on a PC. Eight bit do that was what I was trying to remember. Yeah, that controller is expensive as well. I guess you get what you pay for. Not sure if I'm in track for Master at mid 50s. I think I might be slightly behind. But I should definitely get it by around 60. Assuming no more mess ups. And then we'll get to watch the final cutscene. To be honest, Alchemist has a better final cutscene, but they're different for each of the characters. No spoilers though. You want to see Alchemist, you'll have to do it yourself. Oh, wait to see if I run run this with Alchemist. It might be quicker. That's the temptation with Alchemist, because you can farm gems on flash columns for longer without getting any duplicates. Doing CPU without exchange, that's the colour though. I really don't know how to have to do that first run. Not only do you have to do the first run, you have to lose to punch the first time. And it's nice to have that back up. I think I'm good. Yeah, I'll get magic before before I lose this time. When I was younger, I had no idea magic would so important. So I used to end up getting really high levels without getting a a good ranking. I 
because I'd play the whole thing not stacking up any high columns at all. And then I wouldn't get to reuse any of my magic gems. We need A++ ranking and then we can get to Master. I think it would be about... 1 and a half hours, 1 hour 40 minutes for the... 24 gem run. 24 gem run is an official run at the moment. Um, it was difficult to know what to put because... Any percent is usually the usually the point that you get to credits, but there's multiple ways of getting to credits in these games. Uh, you get it at the end of flash columns, you get it at the end of versus mode, so you can see the credits in about 10 minutes. But then you don't get the final cutscene until you collect all the gems, but well, until you get, get 24 of the gems. But then there's 25 gems to collect in total. Which I guess you could call 100% except... Not really 100% because... If you want to... Complete everything... You'd need the max number of gems... On both characters, which would be... 5 times 25... Times 2. But that would take days to complete. I don't think anyone wants to do that run. Base. This has to be like the most relaxing music for such a stressful, a stressful part of the run. Honestly, you lose focus for like a second and then you completely mess things up. Because once you've made like one mistake, it just becomes a chain reaction. Start piling gems up all over the place, you have to sort of get back in the zone and start bursting things. I guess it is a good way to try and teach yourself not to panic when you make a mistake. Or at least I would say that, but I still always panic when I make a mistake, so... Maybe it's not the best learning experience. Does it take your mind of things, though? to get completely in the zone. Just look at the burst. Where are we? 1,800. So this isn't a great gem score. You can get mastered by about 1,600 jewel drops. But anything under 2,000 is alright. It's not the worst. We didn't get Master by rank 60, but that's okay. Early 50s is probably the earliest you can get it. If you play badly, you can go into the hundreds without getting 
a master rank. I'd guess we'd get master now around 1,000, no, 2,100, 2,000, 200, around that point. It'll probably be after we get the next magic gem. Which isn't too far off now. It isn't too far off now if I don't mess this up. Mm. Yeah, I got this. So harsh, you make a mistake and you've just got to immediately, immediately recover with like no time. Well, it wasn't magic that we were lacking. We said luck's based on how many three of a kinds you get and magic's based on how much we'll use the magic stuff. I can't remember which one's based on the chains and I don't know what the other two values are based on but I'll probably look into it more as I try and optimize the optimize the survival run because it'd be really helpful to know exactly how to get high scores. I don't usually worry about the other two because I often get highest on the other two without when I'm trying to get the other stuff. It's a good distraction though. I used to play this before all my school exams to try and... Well, we level 17 we haven't got master. All my school, all my school exams to try and distract me so I didn't panic and end up end up forgetting all my crammed revision. Pretty one of the reasons that I spent like several hundred hours in this game. There we go, Nova. 1150. <laughs> Ending cutscene time. Seventy-one. Okay, that's quite a not a great score. There's definitely some time to be saved there. We have fireworks in the middle of the day. I mean. <laughs> Can grant any wish, they really should have led with that. As I said, Alchemist has a better wish, but I wonder how many people have seen that because it's not one of the um, most of the people I've spoken to never got to the end of this. Here we, here we have the extra bonus credits. This is why I wanted to route it to the end of either. 
either CPU mode or flash comms. Doesn't even really explain what she wished for, I guess like a box of jewellery. The ending cutscenes are... <laughs> oh, it's lacking luck. Hmm, that's why you really want to start off with a three of a kind drops. So I'm doing doing CP versus mode now because we'd probably have to run it at some point and. I don't know if this is the optimal order, but it probably tells the best narrative. As so if you never realise when playing the game, each time you defeat Pinch, she'll give you a hint based on which gems you have about how to get the next gem. So now we've got 24 gems, and what's she going to say? You'll have to find out. Beat. Yeah, the ending cutscenes are basically the same, it's just the just the final image on each of them, because they both have different wishes. <laughs> it's kind of a surprise though to find out they the crown grants, grants a wish. I mean, they they never mention that at any point in the intro. And we still never see Dazzle's mother. I think I played... Played too well there. I didn't build up a high columns. It's going well so far. I know it's only like the first, the first two CPUs again, which don't matter as much. There we go. Played a lot worse than. Oh, that's not quite right. See, so he dropped it on the left side there. Sorry. Got like two brain cells. They're trying to work out which way's left and which way's right. He dropped it on the right side there and he burst it slightly. Played it strange slightly too early, so. I was hoping it would get the drop first and then exchange of play and his next gem would be on the left. 
but it's not terrible. It's one of the nice things playing at Strange rather than War. I do have to worry here because now that we've got all the gems, they're playing their ending gems. So. Like I said before, the gems they use changes depending on which gems you have. So now I've got 24 gems, Stavro plays Vacuum as their first gem. So I need to be careful to get an exchange before he can get anything. Otherwise he'll play Vacuum and up. I really need a black gem. There we go. Purple gem. <laughs> that wasn't great. He burst the center. I gave him, gave him a way out. But he gave me a vacuum. So yeah. am I going to be able to use this jinx? Yeah. I'm going to make sure that I don't end up killing myself. Perfect. Yeah, so I guess the gems they use increase their difficulty. At this stage, the Severus gems are quite nasty because it's... I think he plays like Vacuum every other gem. Which means if you play slowly, then... He can wipe out your first stuff with vacuum. And then just as you're about to get get your points back, he'll get vacuum again. I do wish I had a better understanding of the CPU AI. Because usually they try and avoid the center, but sometimes. Like then, they just get a massively high center column. That is not great, because she's going to use up. I don't exchange quickly. That was not a good... That was not a good time to use that. Mm. Now she's going to use up, and she gave me a terrible board. Which is going to kill me if she's already used Meteor. Yeah, that's... I gave her a good board, and then I lost. That's not great, because... Okay, the reason that's unfortunate is because Jinx... Jinx and Robo only give you gems if... if you beat them first try without using a continue. And we're now at the point in the game where we're trying to collect gems as quickly as possible, so... Not only have I lost the time in that battle, I've lost... I'm gonna have to make things up catching... Uh, getting gems. And to make up the time. And find another place to get a gem. Uh, at least it didn't take a long the second time. My splits look so red. They wouldn't mean as much of a problem if I'd lost against 
Pinch because she'd still at least have given me a gem. I guess all of this gives plenty of opportunities for time saves in the next the next time I try this run. But it's going to be a while before I get a chance to do this run again. That's why I'm running today until I finish this, I'm not resetting, because... Yeah, same stress as last time, wait for the up, and... Didn't give her a really bad one, but... Ideally, you know, you switch when the one drop in the centre would get them, but... You give them a bad enough board, it doesn't matter. Do you think you have all the magic gems? There's actually a secret 25th gem. The first time I read that, I thought it was just the developers trolling. To be honest, this game does have some massive trolls in, but time to get that 25th gem. Okay, I can try giving Link Battles a go. I'm still not sure if it's going to work or not. Oh, sorry. That's the second emulator booting up. If this works, this will save a little bit of time. If it doesn't work, I mean, any gems we get using this method will save some time. It will only lose time if there's... we can't get it to work. A single go. But that's definitely a possibility with how bad the link connections are in this. I'm not going to try it lots of times because it does fail very frequently. Um, I think that should have gone through already. It looks like the connection's dropped. Unless... No. I'll try rebooting. Uh, one more try. And then... Because this will let us get four more gems, and if that doesn't work, then... Oh, sorry again. <laughs> I really need to make it so it mutes when it opens up the second one. It's a bit loud. There's my audio window. That's a treat for everyone. I don't know why OBS defaults to ah, show my audio so loud. Show my audio window every time I restart the emulator. Okay. 
Fingers crossed. Okay, one last go, because I don't know why it's not loading. It usually loads at least a few times, but... This is so loud. I might have to, really, might have to lower the volume in post. Maybe not. Maybe it's okay. I don't know why it resets the volume each time it restarts as well. At least it's going through now. I think. That's the first one. I need to keep track of how many I'm doing. I swear, even if this works, I've probably not saved any time now. Given how long I've taken restarting this. Maybe I should... Maybe I should move this to the start of the run. To try and make sure that I can reset if I get bad link cable RNG. Number three. Turn my headphones down. That's number four. If we can get one more win, we'll get... Shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> I think it's frozen again. So we got no gems from doing that. That's just a complete... A complete waste of time. Once the connection drops in this game, you pretty much lose it entirely, so... I'm 
given up. I'm going to do... One complete run of flash comes down and then three more and then... Then I'll take a stock count of gems because I... Hmm, right seed already. See, that's what I was hoping for right at the beginning. So you can go the level through 1 through to 50 once before we max out the gems that we have. So we get duplicates on level 5 and level 50, uh, no, level 5 and level 40. It's not worth wasting the duplicates on level 40 just to get the gems on 45 and 50 again. And it does considerably speed things up if we only have to go half the levels. It's still going to take a while to get all this. Honestly, I was hoping to get the Link stuff and then if I was playing slightly more better, then I might have gone for the more exciting route of trying to get more gems through survival and CPU battles. But given the way that I'm playing today, it's not worth taking any risks at this point. This isn't going to be the most... The most interesting run now. It's going to be me playing the same levels that I did right at the start of this run four times in a row. Or more times in a row. This is why I hate to do, I'd hate to do things like streaming, because how are you supposed to keep things entertaining when I guess you maybe you pick entertaining stuff, but When you have to do boring stuff, how do you, how do you make sure that things are stay interesting? I guess most people do things like story times, but I do not have any. Anything plans that I need to concentrate. See how quickly the columns go down if you break the just two of the gems in those really high columns that alternate one one of each. If I sound distracted, it's it's because I sort of am. This requires an annoying level of concentration where you still have to kind of focus on what's going on. You can't just switch off and do it. But it's not like taking a lot of a lot of thought because I already know the route. And I have the complete route already mapped out. Along with slides that have all the instructions for it. I'll, I'll put a link in the description, although bear in mind that stage 29, I have to figure out when I come to it. If I don't work out 
what I'm missing in there then. I'm probably not going to go back and fix it. Given that I don't expect to run this... Run this particular seed for flash clums again. I think there are better seeds. One of the things when you, um, when I was like grinding for, well, practicing to try and get the right timing, I kept finding that I was doing it faster each time I did an attempt. So I think I can probably get some seeds that I wasn't, I wasn't quick enough to manage initially. I might do like a batch of 10 and play them all up to level 10 to try and work out which is fastest. Yeah, sub 5 hours is going to be a little bit difficult now, but it's still possible. I think, I think it's still possible given the speed at which i done the rest of it. Maybe. I'm not playing great today. It's just another one of those areas where I have to try and make use of every green available because there aren't any in the drops. Oh, I should probably explain why the rest of the run takes so long. So we are like, how long? with maybe two and a half hours in. And we got, we got all, um, we got 24 gems at around the hour mark. No, sorry. <laughs> around the two hour mark. And there's only one gem left to collect, the 25th one. You might be wondering why it takes another... Like three to four hours to try and get that last gem. It's because the, the final jump ace has three requirements that I know of. Firstly, you have to get all 24 gems. The second requirement is that you need 80 gems in total, which is... Which is why this is going on so long, because... At this point, we just have to farm gems. We just have to farm gems until we get all of them. We need... It's probably the most interesting part of the run in terms of... routing, because everything up to this point was just... something that you had to do in order to get the 24 gems. Whereas now I have to make decisions based on how quickly I think I can farm them on each particular thing. Or in my case, how consistently, which is why I'm doing flash columns. This is what I meant to do in the first run and messed up. The final requirement to get Ace is to beat the game, beat survival mode again with the master ranking. That is the bit that I'm most 
I'm most nervous about with this run because... Nice. Because if I fail getting Master Ranking there, that is just a massive time loss. See, before, if I failed getting Master Ranking like I did earlier, it's not a complete waste of time because I was still able to collect gems while doing it, and that's going to save some time. It's going to save some time now while we're farming gems. However, if I mess up at the end, that is going to be a 20 minute or so time loss for every time I mess up. And survivor mode is the bit I hate the most. So, it's the most stressful part of the run for me. Right at the end. I think flash comms is probably my favourite. My favourite, um... Of the game modes. I know at the time people like TP versus mode a lot. TP versus mode is fun, it's just. There's a limit to which gems are actually good against the CPU because their AI is so bad. Well, it's so random. So yeah, for like a long car journey, Flash Collins was always my go to. If you need to kill like an hour. I did have one of those, um, one of those plug in and play TV systems a long time ago, and that was the first. That was my first experience with columns. Uh, in general, that was the original stuff. When I say original, it was the, <laughs> the original game that played on. one of those fake systems. You know the ones, the ones you can get like. from Dodgy Dave down the market. Or so you like a £20 <laughs> game cartridge that has. That for 100 games on. Doing better than I was in the first run through this. I'm feeling slightly more relaxed now. Probably just because I've I've done it once in this run already. I know that I've got to do it three more times after this. Not that 29 is relaxing because I know the first inputs that I've got written down are right. That was supposed to go to the right. I think. Sorry, left. I can't do my left and rights. Not this time of day. I still have to use my hands for doing left and right. You know, we hold them out in front of you and do the L is for left. 
which unfortunately I can't do while holding a controller. I always say that made my driving test really difficult. I remember the examiner being like, hey, go left. No, the other left. No, the other left. I went completely the wrong route. But I still pass. Because apparently they can't they can't mark you down for going the wrong route as long as you drive safely. So I played a bit on the TV console first, but that wasn't really how I got into into Columns Crown specifically. That was a little bit later on. So I generally have a problem in video games where I like to go through menus and stuff and explore a little bit of exploration just see what all the buttons do. All the functions of the buttons, I like to know what's going on there. And as you know from the start of this run, this has a data format in the menu. Obviously I had to see what that did on my brother's cartridge. Yeah, he wasn't happy. <laughs> Which is how I specifically ended up playing a lot of this game, was to go and recover the gems that I lost from his save data. That was a mistake. This was such an easy level the first time I did it. It was going so well. What did I do wrong there? I have to see that one over there. I think I put the yellow, red, green there this time. Instead of the red, yellow, red. Yeah, and then I just wait for the two. The two of a kind green drop. So a lot of this, a lot of me playing this started out trying to recover some save data. And it would be several years later till I got my own cartridge for this. Specifically the Chi Chi Rocket Edition. If you're wondering, there's three main releases for this game. Well, three region-specific releases for this game. There's the Japanese, the American, and the European release for this game. But then there was also two more cartridges this game shipped on. Which was the... Chi Chi Rocket Edition, so it shipped in a two-in-one cart for the Chi Chi Rocket Edition, which is the one that I mostly played on back in the day. I didn't play a lot of Chi Chi Rocket. Never got into Dreamcast games. And then there's the last edition of this game, which I haven't actually seen a cartridge for. I think it exists. Like, there's references on the internet to it, but I've not, I've not seen one. Which was the two-in-one cart that shipped with uh, Solid Sonic Pinball.
Mm, my, my favorite copy of this game is the Japanese one because the box art's way nicer. And so is the instruction manual, but... If I had to purchase another copy of this game, I'd probably want to find the Sonic Pimple one. The one I'm kind of interested in. I've not seen it. I wonder if it's as janky as the Chi Chi Rocket stuff. I say the Chi Chi Rocket stuff is janky because the Dreamcast port of Chi Chi Rocket the age of this is It's got bits left in from the Dreamcast that do not do not belong there. And the stuff that they must have put in. Or must have made work, but there's like... Okay, so I'll give an example. They've kept in a bunch of the code for the online connectivity uh, that you had on the Dreamcast. There's like this, this browser bit that you can go into and you get like a mouse that you can move around the screen with your with your GBA cursor. But obviously the GBA never had any um online capabilities. I guess the GBA player might have with an GameCube Ethernet stuff, but I don't think it was ever supported. So you've got the code and Dreamcast stuff that obviously never would have been used, but For some reason, it's not in that game pack. Gigi Rocket and Sonic Pinballs would be the lowest to do a speedrun for because there's an extra menu when you do the boot up that you'd have to go through. And there's a lot of Turning off the game back and resetting this run to manipulate the RNG, so... You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't see it in a natural run. Unless... Unless there's some way of manipulating the... memory from one game from another one of the games. I think it would need to persist past being turned off. I don't even know if that would be allowed in a run. Or whether it be treated as a separate game. I don't want to say it. <laughs> I'm out of facts about the game now. I'm only at level 42, there's... We've got to get to level 50, and then we've got to get from level 6 to level 40 another three times. Meet myself when I open another another drink. Be drinking this much. I'm gonna make myself actually need the bathroom this time. Because my throat's so dry. I might have to get a, a throat sweet in a bit. I 
think I have a box under my desk, so I don't have to get up. It might be all these raisins. So, <laughs> I'm keeping myself motivated with a bag of a bag of raisins and cashew nuts. So if I'm going silent for a long period, you know what I'm doing. They're so good. I don't know what it is about the combinations. Dates and bananas are the other ones I like. Of those trail makes you style products. I guess the cranberries are good too. The ones that I find hard to eat are the ones that I put like bits of coconut in. I do like coconut, but I find it quite hard with the little bits of flakes. I always end up with like coconut flakes stuck in my mouth. Probably not super healthy for you. Not the coconut, the um dried fruits and stuff because the fruits are basically just sugar and the nuts are like mostly fat we are marketed as a, like a health food but I don't know I don't know if they're really that healthy. Forty nine, try not to panic. Oh, that's the microphone not. It does always look scary. It's the one stage I wonder where... Left down. Where I wonder if you can get sequences that make it impossible. Because most of the time, even if you get like a really bad sequence, it's still possible to finish it, but there's so much, there's so little room if the error in that 49. And that's another 10 gems. So we had 33 plus the, so I got 3 from the CP run. How many do you get from survival? So, I did an extra survival run that would have been. I might have picked up five gems there. 33, 43. 46. 
Are we at 50? Um, is that one frame too early? I think it might have been. Yeah. So you got... Because it's one one off in the sequence, if you go one frame too early, you get a purple red red instead of the red red orange. That's too early. You can usually tell from the banner, but you can always tell from the banner, but it goes away quite quickly. And C209 and C210 are both positions on the E of mode. Or just after the... That's way too late. Or just after the... I know, it's like a neck character in there. In the JP version of the game, it's the same. Is that early? I think it might be okay. Yeah, that time it was okay. So there's slightly different positions. You can see slightly more of the E visible when you get the 210 seed compared to the 209 seed. I usually get it right when I'm... Uh, was that what I was meant to do? I think I was supposed to play that up on the high column. A great start. Yeah, I messed up, but I think... I think this is recoverable. If I actually use my brain. Um, I'm going to need to use my brain slightly better than that. Press this, then I need two more purple gems. And there we go. You see I'm starting at stage six this time because... There's no point getting there. With the speed we get from stage five. Any of the gems look kind of black that I keep calling purple and Sometimes I do slip up and still call them black. That's sort of how they look on the field. But I'm pretty sure they're meant to be purple, like they are in the the crown cutscene where it drops down. And I'm trying to teach myself to remember to call them purple because it makes it slightly easier when doing notations. If you've got, if you call them purple, you can give each gem a, la a letter when you're writing like notes and stuff for speedruns. If you call them black, you'll end up with two gems that start off with a B.
If I just remember to call them purple, it, it makes the notations more compact. How long have we been going for? Oh, my timer's off the side. I need to fix that at some point. Um, I can do a live fix at some point. I just need to scooch over an OBS. Shrink it down. I guess I didn't expect it to go so long the side because I've not done any I've not done any runs that have lasted more than an hour yet um yeah that's it If there's so many of the challenge stages you just complete by slamming it straight down. It's really mean of them to put the first challenge stage as one that you have to do a rotation for. It means on all of the rest of the challenge stages you're looking for the solution when it's usually just Like, over half the time, it's just putting it straight down. We are coming up to the three hour mark. To be honest, my brain is like completely mush at this point, so I'll probably listen back to the recording and the words that are coming out of my mouth will not make any sense to anyone. I don't know, maybe the, my best hope can be that the combination of the sort of ramblings that I'm doing with what's going on on screen will be enough for someone to piece together uh, how to beat this game if they watch it through. Again, I will put the cheat sheet in the description, so if you're just looking for... If you're just looking for how to get a specific gem, you can go. That'll be linked.
I've been trying to put together a specific guide video to go through how to collect all the gems uh, quickly. Because one of the comments that I see most online is that for this game is that there's people missing one or two gems. So I think it would be quite helpful just to show not the speedrun route, but the quickest way to get any particular gem. Let people clean up if they have. If there's still one that people are missing. One or two. Although usually it is one of those three that people have problems with. The one that you get from the Link Battles because... I think a lot of people played this on DS. So. Um, DS Lite or the original DS. Where you couldn't do Link Battles. Or had trouble convincing a friend to let them beat them a lot. And then the one that you get from losing to pinch is another common one people are missing and the paralyze. I don't think there's any others that people have problems getting. Maybe Nova. I know there are some comments you see online that people aren't aware that there's a master mode. Uh, master ranking in survival. Usually because you can get such a high level without going up any. You don't realise it's tied to specific... The rank's tied to specific things you're doing rather than level. Then you can go to the hundreds without getting without getting master rank and you might not realise that you can get a better ranking. Twenty nine again. I swear this stage is probably the one that's sort of jolting me awake every time I go through this run because maybe I should just leave in a I've messed this up quite badly. Let's reset the one. Maybe I should leave in stage that I don't know the I don't know the inputs for every time. That I have to wake up halfway through the run. It could be the entertaining bit to watch this part of the run. You know? Like, do I actually Manage to figure it out. Because otherwise it's just watching me do the same inputs. Well, watching me fail at doing the same inputs. Maybe that can be the exciting thing. Do I manage to do the same inputs every time? This 
This is exactly what I did last time. Oh no. This is not going well. Maybe I could keep the content engaging by taking bets on how many times I'll mess up inputs that I should be getting. Should be getting right first time every time. Okay, this should be enough for me to... ...win this time. I'm gonna need to pay attention there, because... ...I've gotta run that another... ...another two times. And at this point I can't remember... ...what I did on the first two runs that I didn't do there that made that so much more difficult. I think when I do this again, flash comes could be a, a really big place for time save, especially if I find a seed that works better. So in the in the pure flashcon speedrun, I took like twenty five minutes forty six. And I made some mistakes there, so I think tw sub twenty five is definitely possible. I'd like to find a, a seed that I could easily do sub 25 on if I play well. I think the question is am I going to find a seed that I can do the banner setup for that is sub 25 because it was a much later seed that I got there good run on. Like ten thirty one. When I th say things like two hundred nine and like ten thirty one, uh, I'm talking about the value at the memory address for the RNG seed.
There are multiple bites that make up the seed. That's not a mistake. <laughs> we want to do. We want to lose that because there's no point going to level 40. If we go to level 40, we get up again. We already have five ups. The only reason to do it would be going to. Level 45 and level 50, but it's not worth spending that much time trying to get just few more gems, not when I can reset and I can run the thing from level 6 again. Too late. So if you missed it before, you can look at the banner at the top of the screen. You can start mastering. I think that's right. You can start mashing start on the press start screen. And that starts accepting inputs really early. You pretty much always get through there. Um, as early as you can on the RNG on the RNG side of things. Seed. And assuming you do, the fourth beat of the menu song is where you can start. That's when the screen starts becoming active for you to actually do inputs on. And on the menu screen you want to, you don't want to start mashing before you can put inputs in, that's slightly slower, you want to, you want an early seed, you want to start pressing on that fourth beat. Now, if you go through the menu early, the There's two bytes that we really care about for RNG. And the second one will always be zero. If you go through quickly. So when I'm saying seeds like 210, 209, I mean that the that's the value of the first byte unsigned as an integer. And then And then the second byte zero. When I'm talking about later seeds like 3110, that's because the first byte is at 31 and the, and the second byte is at 10. Although it might make it might make more sense for you to use um Two byte numbers because then it would be a single number. But I'm not sure if that's better, it makes it slightly harder to work out the timings. If you think about things in individual bytes, it becomes easier to do audio timings. If 
Because you can see which bite goes up against which. Which beat in the song. Unfortunately, it's always in times the music. That said, it is really difficult, so that's why I'm not doing any audio timings in this. Not really. I'm still, I'm still using audio cues to work out when to stop pressing, but I'm not relying on them to try and get exact values. I will have to when I eventually do the RNG run of the new game CPU mode. That's going to be quite difficult. It's not the worst thing in the world, like... I think Ocarina of Time runs have like... Loads of... they're like... Some of the tricks have like more than 10 frame per beat inputs in a row. We're getting like 7 or 8 in a what, 7 minute run probably isn't that tall in order. But it would still require a bit of grinding. But it's something I really want to do because I have known for a while that Alchemist New Game is theoretically faster than Sorceress New Game, it's just It's just a question of luck. But with RNG manipulation I can manipulate the luck. And finally prove it and it's gonna be quicker. If we get it right it's gonna look quite funny because um it will be faster than the time you I've It'll be faster than my PB with all gems, so yeah. I've done runs before where you can use all gems for the CPU battles. Rather than just the stunning gems. I think my PB for that's like 8 minutes-ish. A little bit over. If I can get good RNG uh, manipulation, I'll have a faster, I'll have a faster new game time than a new game plus time. Which should be fun. The problem with the run is the initial entering into CP versus mode. You can use banner setup for as well. The tricky part is where you've got a completely empty gem selection. You need to put them all in the right slots quickly. And then get the right audio key.
pretty hard when you got that initial when you got that initial frantic frantic rush to try and put them in quickly and then and then I just slow down and try and listen for the audio to make it I don't know why I played that differently I was stuck waiting for an orange I think that's some exciting variation you can be looking forward to for the next time we do a The flash columns. Don't worry, there's only one more. After this slot. Ten more levels and then And then one more run from six to thirty. Thirty six. I swear my throat is like burning now. I'm gonna end up speaking in a whisper. And then I will have to go and count how many gems I have because I've lost track of the routing. I need to work out how many I need to get. Oh no, not 29 again. I swear I yawn and every time I'm just yawning it's 29 that comes up. I'm so tired. It was light outside when I started this run. Not anymore. He must have not messed up his body this time. One of the weird things about timing for flash columns, because the in-game timer it stops counting as soon as you hit a chain that that would burst the the target gem for it, but it still counts if you hit a chain that isn't going to burst that gem. So some of the interesting time saves in this when you're planning the route. 
involve trying to avoid anything that's chains because it's not e it's not always the lowest number of drops that makes it the quickest it's sometimes trying to work out how you can avoid any chains especially as the timing is on um rta So playing that chain animation every every level would just take up loads of time. Here we go, just a few more levels in this one. I'm really tempted to close my curtains. I don't want anyone peeping through the windows. Although I imagine they'll be really disappointed. Unless they were desperate to try and work out how to get the final gem in this game. These two are so creepy. Someone looking through the window to try and work out how to speedrun a game. I guess it's better than the alternative. You mm, fixed that timer. Now that I've got some time. My prediction. <laughs> Quite uh, out of the blue thing to say, I should probably explain. Head up this time again. I <laughs> should probably explain when that's on my mind. So I went out to get snacks before the run, where it was where I picked up all the fruits and nuts and stuff. I saw an old man at the door. And he was kind of struggling with it, so I like held it open for him, he thanked me. That's not that unusual. Uh, so I go around the shop, I get everything that I need. I'm getting picking up some energy drinks. But I can stay awake for this. Audio time, one, two, three, four. Oh, was that right first time? First try. That's how you know things are going well. Yeah, so I pick up some fruits and nuts, I pick up some energy drinks. Uh, I go to the checkout and the little man's just in front of me in the queue. I think he's buying like cigarettes or something. And he asks for stuff for the, ca uh, the cashier and the cashier's like, Okay, is there anything else you want to buy? And out of nowhere he just goes, No. Unless she's for sale. Like, points at me. Like, what? That was completely uncalled for. And the shop shopkeeper doesn't know what to say either. We just both stare at him. And then he does like the biggest dirty laugh. Says that he can't help himself.
I don't know why it always surprises me with like old men. <laughs> you think they're gonna be really sweet and then and they do something like that. Maybe he just meant that he wanted like someone to hold doors open for him. And that's gonna be in my head cannon. We're racking up these gems now. Yeah, I know a few of the game, uh, a few of the girls at school volunteered at the nursing home. Apparently, it was just as bad there. And so we had to do volunteer work, but we didn't have to. You got extra credit for doing. Volunteer work. And the choices were the... Well, you could find a charity yourself, but the choices that the school provided were... Either the old people's home, or the nursery, or you could work for a charity shop. Gain some experience in the toes. So yeah, initially I worked at the um it was just like a few hours a week at the nursery. Which was great because you gotta Ah, uh, I've messed that up. I shouldn't have a red there. I need to bust those greens. How am I gonna fix this? I am gonna fix this by... Ah, that's how I'm gonna fix this. Yeah, no, the, um, the nursery is really good because you got to play with all the kids all afternoon. I feel like that is the... That's just about the right mental level for me. Love me a good sandpit. It's kind of exhausting though. You need to have high energy the whole time or they will just lose you will lose their attention. I only did one term in the in the nursery. I went on to the the shops afterwards. It was probably the better experience for real world jobs. I have a lot of um, retail experience doing that. And it's good for summer jobs.
Like the first place I was doing summer work after that, if you could use a pricing gun, they could basically leave you unsupervised. And that's really all they cared about for stock. I ended up getting really good with the pricing gun. I'd speed run all the pricings. When I say a pricing gun, I don't mean like the little stickers, I mean the ones that you, you put through the seams. Not quite through the seams. The ones you attach plastic bags onto clothing with. You load it up with the plastic tag so it's got that sharp pointy bit. Never cut myself, not even once. I think there's something very th therapeutic about stabbing things. Repeatedly. You're improving your efficiency. Get really good at that stabbing. That's the same for all jobs, like if you're a blacksmith. Do you manage to like work out the stress by beating things with an anvil? I guess there probably aren't that many blacksmiths nowadays. Or it's all like hydraulics. Think of any other jobs where you get to hit things. Like professional sports players. That was a mistake. Uh this isn't even a difficult level. You can tell by the quality of what I'm saying that I already lost the plot at this point. We can try, we can try and make sub five hours still. I'm not doing terribly. I have made mistakes and there's definitely room for improvement when I come back. I think, I think after this run, I'll probably take a small break from doing any speedruns for this game specifically. Maybe like two weeks and then come back and try and finish off the, come back and try and finish off the RNG CP new game. Uh, the next run of this is going to take, it's going to take some planning if I've got to try and find a better seed for this.
But I guess it's better knowing that there's a lot of places where I can save time than coming back and having no idea where I could save time. At least that's what I tell myself. What's the bets? Am I going to mess it up again this time? Oh no, that seems like I'm doing okay this time. Oh, I was. How am I going to fix this? Oh, that's annoying. I'm one off being able to get a diagonal. How am I going to fix it? Not like that. Should have burst the yellow. Mm, yeah, that's... Oh god. I should have burst the orange. Okay, that's it. I just need another purple. That's the problem I have in this game. My brain is just too slow at seeing the right stuff, so I usually go for something and realise it's the wrong burst just in the last moment. We'll see a better one just before I get it, but it's already too late to change my inputs. Now there's a few things I want to do. In the meantime, I've got a bunch of books to read. Because it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago. I have not... I've been planning this run for a while in my free time, so I've not had a chance to read any books yet. My brother sent me the first three books in the Akatar, the Court of Thorns series. Because he's forgiven me for deleting his save files a long time ago. And he knows I like my fantasy romance. Actually, I usually really like more shift to romance, I think. Werewolves are more my jam, but I don't know. I think I'd, I've not read the series yet. I think I'd avoided it because I don't know. There's something about fairies. I don't know what mythology like the fairies in this are following, but I, I kind of avoided any of the fairy romance stuff. One of those things that I'm just not sure about. Like, yeah, I'm not sure what type of fairies they are, but I'm thinking like... When you think fairies, you think like mushroom circles and like delicate little wings and stuff. I think it'd be really awkward dating like a fairy. Because you know when you like strip over and pull like the curtains down? I don't know why I say well, like when you pull out trip when you do it as if as if everyone's tripping over and putting the curtains down. It's probably just me. I am not the most coordinated person. But I can just imagine like you fall over, you accidentally like pull the delicate little fairy wings off. It means such an awkward, such an awkward first date. Ah, uh, 
Okay, well, we've, be <laughs> we've done the boring part. I can stop. I can stop trying to think of things to say. Um, I need to count the gems. We have 5 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. Um, well that takes us up to Jinx. Then we have 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 5 plus 2 plus 5. Plus 3 plus 2 plus 5 plus 5 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That's all of them. That is 68. Oh, that would be nice if I got that gem, gem from Jinx. We'd have one more. Uh, survival mode farming it is. And if we get lucky with X2s, we could save some time. I'm probably reading too much into it. But for fairies, I'm sure they're about like... Like, it'll be different, a different sort of fairy that I'm thinking of. Not like the Heroes 1 style. Heroes 1? Heroes, the Heroes 2? One of the Heroes games had fairies. I also need to finish Mario Odyssey. I started a while back. I keep getting stuck. I stuck, got stuck for like two hours in Lake Kingdom. I don't know what it is about these games. I miss really obvious, really obvious parts. Like, I know it's designed, so there's like a way you're meant to go and you're meant to find the way, but I just get so lost. I get so lost and then I find like a jump that looks like you can... You can just about make it, so I'll spend like an hour and eventually get it and it'll take me somewhere and then I'll find out there was like an actually a really easy path up to get up there or like a way you're supposed to do it. There we go, that's our five chain. Shame we missed the X2. Um, where am I going to play this? I'm going to play this up to rank B and then I'm going to reset. I think that's probably the fastest way to get things. It may not be. I assumed in the notes when I wrote them that you had to get to A plus to get one of the unlocks, and I think I, think I discovered in the first run that's actually A minus. There may be a quicker way through this. I guess I'll play normally how I was going to play and how I planned. And if I'm missing gems, I can play up to E minus. If I'm missing like one or two. If I'm missing like three or four, then I'll probably do another run of after like I've played three sets of survival. Then I can do another CPU run. Oh, we're nearly four hours in. What, ten minutes off? do only have slightly more than an hour to go so five hours isn't isn't entirely unreasonable i might just make it Uh, 
Oh, I muted myself there. I need nasal drops. I'm really struggling to breathe. I don't have hay fever. Just sometimes I get. Some difficulties. Probably because I did some hoovering earlier. It kicks up the dust. I'm always bad after cleaning. But I, I'd hate to do like a... I don't think I could focus on doing a run if my room was dirty. It's just one of those things I would get very distracted if I had to do a speed run in a dirty room. <laughs> Need everything clean first. Like, you'd be doing the run and you just see, oh, I need to clean that up later. I need to clean that up later. I've seen people on Twitch, like, do runs and they've got like hands on the floor and stuff. I don't know how they focus. Just not mentally listing all the things that they've got to got to tidy up around the room. I was mostly joking only about that paralysed bathroom break, but I might need to. We'll see. I think I'll be okay for another hour. Another hour. I do often find those problems in games though. I somehow just miss the really obvious paths. End up taking like completely bizarre routes. One of the reasons that I don't really like open world games as much, because I just get stuck for ages. Like, the best game for me is one where there's just one path and you are not allowed to deviate from it. Because honestly, like, the number of games that I have accidentally taken a really weird long path for, or even sometimes soft locked because you don't go in the order they're expecting. I mean, like Ace Attorney, that is my ideal level of. How much control you're allowed over the sequence in a game. I really like the DS one. But I was quite disappointed by the third one and Apollo Justice. I like the 3DS one, but then I kind of felt ripped off by the DLC stuff they released.
I don't I just hate DLC in games in, in general, like If I get a game, I want the full experience in that game. I don't even like update patches for games. Like, you should be game with a bug, live with it. We'll just make sure there's no bugs in when you make it. One of the reasons I play cartridge games a lot more, because... You know, once it's shipped. Like, that's the version of the game that exists. Okay. Um, we will play again. I'm going to reset the RNG to try and get another XT. If we get lucky, we get lucky. If not, I'll just start off with the five chains. Given how much has gone wrong, it's surprisingly how it's surprising how close I am to my route. Because I've gained gems where I wasn't expecting to, but I've lost gems in other places. I think I'm really one off what I thought I'd have at this point. Yeah, I'm not a fan of DLC or any games that I have to connect with the internet or do any update. Like if if I have to connect the game to the internet to play it, I'm not I'm not playing it. Even if it's like download updates or something. I don't want to update something. I want the original copy. I mean half the fun of the game is working out. It's weird behaviours. What's the point if they're going to patch it out? Bugs give it character. Okay, four hours. Oh, no, well, uh... Um, and I was quite quite optimistic about that. Survivor farm timing. I thought I could get to rank be in about five minutes, and that is not the case. I guess it probably is the case if you, if you start off on a really good seed and play really well. Probably can get to rank B that quickly, but... Yeah, so I was really disappointed even when the DLC for Ace Attorney came out on 3DS. I wasn't happy that it was like software I need to begin with. Um, I much prefer having like a physical copy of something. I meant I had to connect my 3DS to the internet, which I don't like. But 
but then having like DLC like that means that you don't like there's no definitive copy of the game then. I think it was more disappointing because there wasn't even like a cartridge, so there's only a digital copy of that game and depending on when you bought it you got different things. Anyway, that's my minor ace Tony run. Maybe one day I'll run about all the problems in the third game. Because that game was a mess. I mean, Apollo Justice was really unsatisfying, but the, the third game for a... I'm not going to get into it, but... I like my detective stuff. And I think a really important part of any detective mystery is not having loopholes and that game is full of inconsistencies and loopholes like along with my paranormal romance I read a lot of um paranormal detective stuff to you I was a big fan of like Sherlock Holmes growing up. Um, I used to like Detective Conan on TV. I must have watched hundreds of episodes of that. And if it's like sci-fi. I don't think detective novels need or detective stories need to be consistent with the world as we know it today. Like, I don't mind if there's supernatural elements. Or I don't mind if they're pushing the boundaries of what's possible with physics. But they had to be internally consistent, otherwise a lot of the fun of those types of stories right, is trying to work it out yourself. How are you supposed to work out the solutions to things yourself if they don't even remain internally consistent to their own logic? B minus. Just one more rank and we can try again. I'll be a little disappointed if there's no XTs. I guess that would save some time. I'm not going to try and do the reset for Saranji again because when I got that earlier, that was definitely a fluke. Like, I am not good with the timings on that. Although, potential time saver later. If I do learn the... If I do learn the timings for that, then... The next time I do this run, it will save time. Because I'll be able to use that as my if we're getting gems quite quickly. I'm going to speed things up. I think if I can get faster flash climb seed. If I can... Ah, uh, I don't want to lose here. 
I do not have much space to work with. Maybe stop panicking when it goes above above the three line. On all the columns. And there's no diagonals. To lower it with. It's funny I have to worry. And often you can still save it, but Usually if it goes high and you have some diagonals that you can bust, then you can still save things. It's a worry if you go quite high and you don't have any, any diagonals set up. His verticals and horizontals do not last that long. Okay, one more of these probably. I don't think it's not an X2. Given how many blues there were, it's annoying there's no X2 there. If that yellow had been an orange, then I could have got an X2 just by just by busting them all together. The requirement for X2 isn't that you get a three of a kind first, it's that you clear the board entirely once you've already had gems in it, but that means, it means that getting a three of a kind first is the easiest way to do it. Like, otherwise, you have to get incredibly lucky. Right, there are some situations where the first two gems, you get two of one colour and the second is the two of that other colour. You can do it. Not quite five. <laughs> really bad at breaking moon chains. I might just have to hope for a long chain later. Because <laughs> my board's pretty full now. It might be better to you. quickly get it on the next one if I'm running out. Or if I have to run CPU again anyway, maybe I can make up the difference. Don't think this is five. Oh yeah, it is five. Six. I was setting up that chain for ages and I forgot how far I'd got <laughs> I'd got into the chain. Okay, that's good. I can And stop focusing on trains now. Stop getting back to more gaming hot takes. I need to <laughs> I need to stop the hot takes before it gets too spicy. Otherwise we'll get on to like favourite gaming favorite Zelda game being Skyward Sword. Which is Oh not be taking questions on that. 
was definitely the one that was most buggy the first time I played it. But if anything, that makes it better. I like my games buggy. Not game breaking buggy. Interesting things happening buggy. I think I did get some bugs in Twilight Princess, but like nothing major. And I'm not sure I'd be able to tell if there were bugs in Ocarina of Time because it's so confusing anyway. I've not played Breath of the Wild yet. Well, not a lot. I've played a tiny bit. Mainly because I know that I won't enjoy it. It's like someone tailor made a game that I wouldn't enjoy. Like, of the bunch of things I hate in games, like, open worlds but there are loads of things to do. It's just... something that I really hate having to do. <laughs> like when you see a world and you're like, oh no, there is so much to do in this world, I do not want to do this. I know that a lot of people like that sort of freedom and flexibility, but there is just... If I have choices of things to do, then I will get too worried to do anything. Same with anything with like a degradation system. If I know that it can run out, I'm not using it. And yeah, I am one of those players that ends up any game where there's like consumable items, I never use them and then end up with all the consumable items at the end of it. Like playing Pokemon, you end up with all your Master Balls because what if you need them later? What if an even better legendary comes along? I might try it again. I think now there's like a lot of speedrun routes for it, I might enjoy it more. I find that watching speedrun routes can, it kind of adds focus to the game because it has that extra goal of speed. You can sort of work out, okay, this is the most optimal thing to do. And these parts of the game aren't actually necessary. I'm a little high for this early on. I guess I only need one more rank. I should have gone for the diagonal there. Hmm, I don't like this. Maybe I'm not going to get it. Or maybe I'll get an epic chain and manage it anyway.
I find that a lot of the time if you don't panic when it's getting to the top and you manage to sort of just keep on setting up chains and working things out, you can, you can often recover. I'm sure there's some it's some deep life lesson to be learned there. Uh, don't give up. <laughs> never, never panic until it's over. Something like that. If I was, if I was smarter, I'd be able to figure out what on earth I'm talking about. <laughs> there we go. I can end this. I can end this one. This is magic over. Maybe. If I go on to A minus, I could catch up, but probably not worth it. Not if I have to run the CPU anyway. Again. Well, yeah, I have to. I could do something else. I could go out of my XTs. But I think I'm going to run CPU again. Depends. Depends how many gems we need. If it's like two, I'll go for X2s. If it's more than two, B2545241 plus five in slots. Five two one one five five five. Uh, three, two, five, five, one, three, two, one. Okay, that's. I need three more gems. Oh, to get to eighty. <laughs> so I won't go back to. It. I'll do CPU. I think I'll. I think I'll play CPU to the end. Even if I do get all the gems. And pick up four gems from them. Just to be safe. And when I say just to be safe, it's because... I'm not 100% confident about that 3 gem, that 80 gem requirement. I know... I should probably explain. Uh, so when I play this casually, I've always had more than 80 gems by the time that I've got, um, by the time that I've got 24 gems. So I didn't know about the 80 gem requirement for ace, but ages I was just getting ace normally. And then when I initially reached the speed run for this, I um I was grinding each of the areas one by one, so I ended up again with more than 80 gems each time. It wasn't until I went to practice the route in full to make sure that it would work that I hit into the problem where I wasn't getting ace. As in fact, I did a whole bunch of testing uh, to try and figure out what what the additional requirement was exactly. And after a while I found out that left. Don't want to break these three columns. Not yet. No, she was already playing right. Okay. Um After a whole lot of trial and error, I found out that um, I think I tried it different values of gems because I I kind of figured it was probably due to how many gems total you had. 
Because I know the game, I know the game keeps track of it. And I knew that that was probably the main difference in the cases. Where I was getting it and where I wasn't. So I tried with a whole bunch of values and like, if you, if you have 24 gems you can complete master on like 70, 78 gems. It definitely doesn't work. And then I've done runs where I've completed it on 81 gems and it does work. And I've, in trades you can lose gems so on the same one that I got I have to use that now. He said he was dropping in the middle. <laughs> he was. Oh, that's perfect. So I got three of a kind there, so I had to use it because he was already dropping in the center. And I'd already been a high center column. It meant that once he exchanged, he had to drop it in the center, so I didn't even need to block him off there. But that is lucky because the. the Center column is the one that the CP usually try and avoid. Sometimes they stack it really high, I don't know why. So where was I? Yeah, I was explaining. So I got it on 81 gems. And through trades you can lose gems if you trade a gem that you already have 5 of. To get a gem that you already have 5 of. You can reduce your gem count, so I reduced it back to 79. And I didn't get it, I think. And then back up to 80, and I did. So I'm fairly confident that 80 is the... The 80 is the amount. But I could be... I could be missing something. Runs, CPU runs actually going really well. This whole thing's going okay. If I win in the next five minutes, which is definitely possible, 30 minutes is a doable time for survival mode. I mean, like 20 minutes is a doable time for survival mode, so. Well, a little over 20 minutes. We could definitely come in under five hours. Yeah, so I don't think I'm missing anything, but I might be, and I don't know if gems that you've got in the current run count towards your total, so if you started survival mode with, say, 77 gems, but then earned three during that, during that playthrough of survival mode, I don't think it would count, because where the game keeps track of it in memory, and that doesn't get updated till you actually... Should have. <laughs> I should have. I'm gonna be close if I can use this or not. Oh, well, Jinx, you sealed your grave there. That doesn't get updated till the um. You actually complete the. So you actually die in survival mode and see the gem. Gem falling animation. So I suspect that you need the OT. I suspect that it's AT exactly and that you need those AT before starting survival mode. But those are definitely things I should look into before doing this again. It might be ways to slightly optimise the route.
I didn't mean to burst that there. Um, well, he gave her bad drop. That's fine. I'll take that. That was actually, um, that's a really good CPU run. That better than my, um, that might be better than my PB for. No, it's not better than my PB. It's close. But I guess I got quite a good luck there. I think in my PB run, I forced all of them. Whereas in that that run, I got quite lucky that some sometimes they just dropped it in the center when they didn't need to. Okay, thirty-one minutes to do this. That's that's doable. And as you see that, I didn't rotate anything, and it burst. So <laughs> X two would have been the next. The next gem. If I was still running up gems, I'd be really tempted to reset and do it. I'm not going to do that now because. While it would give me early extra luck, usually by the time you play like a 20 minute run of this, your luck evens out. It's it's only worth doing RNG manipulation for luck if. Um, If you're trying to collect early gems, it's probably not for getting to master rank quickly. Although I guess in a really optimal run you would um reset for RNG where there's two, three of a kinds in a row at the start. You want a really quick one. But if you're playing for like 20 minutes, your your luck evens out, so it's not really a problem. This is really high to have it this early. I would definitely need to use the magics a bit. I don't want to end up... Uh, for quick master, I should really be leaving a column blank. But I've not done that here. So I can burst at least two of the early magic gems on empty columns and then use them on high columns later when I actually need them. I don't want to end up in a situation where I'm at a really level I'm at like a really late level and I have to sort of make the choice of whether to burst a magic gem in an empty column because at that point you probably won't have an empty column. And if you waste it, it's such a long time between columns, uh, b between getting your next magic gem. If you make a mistake, you're going to get really screwed. And I am trying my best, my best not to make mistakes, because it is really bad if I fail here. Everything else up to this point, we were collecting gems, so it wasn't terrible if I, if I failed. If I fail here, this is pure time loss, because we already have enough gems.
where I'm trying to focus here. As apart from that, my hands are really hurting at this point now. I've been playing for several hours before I started, and we now have three and a, four and a half hours in. It is getting difficult to hold a controller, let alone think about where I should be placing stuff. Just have to remember it will all be won't be over soon. If I sound calm, it is my voice lying to you because I know that I prone, I'm prone to messing up survival mode and if I miss up here I will definitely not get the not get the sub five hours. It's worse than that if I mess up here I won't get the sub five hours and if I do that there's a good chance I won't get a sub. Well I basically get if I mess up here I won't get sub 5. Then I have like one more shot to get sub 530. Because while it's doable in like 20 minutes, it is probably realistically going to take more like 30 minutes. I'm sure there's some psychology that I shouldn't be preparing to fail. I'm trying to work out backup strats if I do, but I don't know, that's how my brain works. Always assume that you're going to fail. I don't know whether to keep a column empty because I've only burst I've only burst one and empty. So if I keep a column empty now. I definitely need more magic points. But if I keep a column empty now, it is I'm potentially gonna end up building up a lot of stuff and then not being able to bring it down. And also, if the rest of my columns get too high, there's no point bursting on empty because 
get lots of magic points from that. I think you need most your board empty anyway as well. I'm just gonna have to... I messed up my board there for no reason. It would be too late to reset at this point. 20, 22 minutes, no. That is... I would have to do my my PB master ranking view. you at this point. Okay, good, we're back. We're back to a healthy board and the question of whether I should try and keep an empty column. I guess not right now because I mean, at the moment, I'm really far away from Magic Jam. And if I do keep an empty column, I want it to be by the side so it doesn't mess around with the playing. If you're trying to maintain an empty column in like the centre or something, it gets really, really difficult. You've always got to prepare for the worst. And then if the worst doesn't happen, it's a wasted effort. So really, bad things happening is a good thing. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. But that's an empty column on the side. If I can keep that, then we're good. Although, still quite far away from Magic Jam. I'll try and keep it. But I might have to ditch it if I start doing badly. Okay, I think if I do this run again, I need something to stop my hands sweating after like nearly five hours. It's super gross, but it's natural. Like rock climbers, rock climbers chalk maybe. How does anyone grip a controller for this long? My thumb is really hurting as well. I've been holding down for so long. I played guitar for a little bit, not seriously, just like chords and stuff. And 
the music wasn't too bad because I'd played other instruments, but I swear, like, after a day of practice, my fingers just got ripped to shreds. That is what the controller is doing to my hand right now. This D pad. Empty burst. That was me. Oh no, but that means. I didn't get it on the empty burst. That means that magic is my limiting factor. I guess we're still 10 levels off. Uh, what, 12 levels off? No. We're more than 12 levels off anyway. When I say you didn't get it, I mean get a rank increase. <laughs> it's way too early for Master. Um. So maybe I need to start going for chains, which is risky, but is that riskier than leaving it for a long time? I'm going to shut up because I need to think. I can't. I can't where I need to put stuff. Not there. Yep. Okay. Uh, A rank. That's good. We need. Yeah, I've got 15 minutes left. That's definitely enough time to do it in. Uh, we need A plus then A plus plus the master. Okay. It's way less than five minutes to get each of these. Maybe ten minutes. We're one thousand three hundred gems in. Masters doable around one thousand six hundred. However, given we're rank A at 1300, we're not getting master that early. We are probably getting master around 2100, I'd say at this point. Sorry if I'm not speaking well, I'm trying to focus. Because I do not want to lose this. I could still make this a five hour. And I won't if I mess this up. Board is okay. I should probably play it slightly safer. I think we have time to get it. Even if I don't play the prop, I have to play fairly well. In terms of points and chains and stuff, but I don't have to. Great, A plus. Uh, we are level forty-seven. We are going to get. Must as plus around like 54, but we're not going to get it at 54. We'll probably get A plus plus at around 54. Uh, Master will probably take around level 60. This is not a bad board to have at this point. We have a lot of blues and oranges. Hmm. Uh, there's diagonal blue that I might be able to get to you. Yeah, 
Please give me good drops. That's alright. Oh, I missed that. I should have rotated it one more. Just focus. We're about three levels off an A++. Probably. Yeah, see, I'm definitely not making a master by 1600. Two thousand is definitely doable. Do I want a thousand something? I better use this magic gem well. Probably on the green. I've got a lot of greens. wasn't as good as I was hoping. The nice thing about magic gems is A++, okay. <laughs> We're nearly there. Maybe less than 10 levels off. In 10 minutes, that's definitely doable. It'd be really easy if I don't mess up now. You never get used to how hot, ugh, how fast your heart beats when there's I'll get near the line. But I'll never get used to it. I used to play a lot of chess and every time you're near victory, just rapid heartbeat. Even if it was like a casual match. I don't know if it's excitement or anxiety about messing up. Probably both. Oh, we're nearly there. Just a few hundred gems. Nearly there. Come on. It could be it could be any second now. It could be as early as 1,900 and something. Given how I played, so... I meant to rotate that.
I'm never rotated that. Come on, we're literally any second. Nearly there. <laughs> I'm cunning at finds the line here. To burst out on the right. Uh, okay, we're in the 1000. 42. We are. We could get at any moment. And I could also lose at any moment. If I lose here, when it's literally this close, I am... I know, I'll probably cry. Oh. You've got no space left. Unless it's in this, not like this. I don't even want to talk about it. You saw that grading chart? Luck was what I was missing. That's lack of three of a kinds. If I had ended that first one, and done a continue. I would have started off with a three of a kind that might have given me enough luck early on. Everything else, everything else had pretty much had a score to give us master. At that point, it was luck. Which is lack of three of a kinds. This is obviously not gonna go. I'm not gonna go five hours now. And I've got literally. I've got literally one shot to do this. Sub 530. And my brain is mush. I already have a mostly full board. At level three. I I don't know if I can do this. It's worse when you know it's all your fault. Like, if I could blame it on the game, if it was like a glitch, then... Maybe... I could say, well, it can't be helped, but... Given that I know how the lock mechanics work... Uh, 
I could have reset. I could I could have done a continue to get a lucky start. I could have reset to force my luck. There's a one in three chance. Because it's three of a kind you get any drop. I'd have a one in three chance of getting the time right. And I didn't, because I thought it wouldn't matter. And then it mattered. It's just really sad. Now the adrenaline's wearing off. I can feel my throat hurting, I can feel my hand hurting. And the only thing I can do is try and play to recover this. If I manage to get 20 minutes of focus. I can still get this under under five and a half hours. I guess sometimes it's just like that. Have to write it off as a time save for next time. Oh, I'm not. Well, we've had a few three of a kinds this time. If we get a really high luck start this time, I don't know whether to be happy. Whether to be happy. Or sad that I messed up by not resetting. <laughs> I even said that there wasn't any point in resetting. Uh, not resetting. Doing the continue force luck, but apparently that is not the case. There wasn't a lot I could do, I didn't know, given that I'd been in the CPU first, I didn't know where, there, where I was in the sequence. It's my phone dying. I know how you feel, phone. know how you feel. I didn't know where I was in the sequence which means I couldn't have known how lucky it would have been. That's wrong. Okay I guess lesson for next time I do this run is to learn the resets for good luck and for X2 because they're the same resets. That will speed up me getting X2 and it will speed up me getting good luck.
Or I guess just learn to play better. Okay, we've had several three of a kinds this time. I think our luck is going to be much better. I've not gone for any high chains. But... We've had some good magic use. They were probably on track for a much earlier master. I am still disappointed, I'm just... I have to put that in a box for now so I can concentrate on this. And shelve it. I will have time to be disappointed later. Right now, the gems need me. I don't know I say the gems need me. I'm bursting them. Again, I'm sure there's some life lesson in that. Like, I don't know, strength not being about doing something succeeding, but how well you do when you fail. Oh. Hmm, chain. It would be rank already. It's a way better run. B plus. I think we'll get master less than 2,000 here. If we'd had this run the last time, I would have already had it. I would have already had it by the time I lost. That's not an excuse for playing badly. I should still not have lost that. It's hard to dwell on your mistakes when this brain takes... This brain? This game takes like... 90% of my brain power. Figure out where to drop things. As it gets faster, I really look at the board. I usually have an idea of where where drops are. So all I'm looking at is the next in the sequence.
which is as good as seeming this stuff to burst, I can get really cool outwear. If I end up in a situation where there isn't really anything to burst on the board. I'm not great at setting up that. Not when I'm not really focusing on it. Like I said at the start, if we get if we get sub five thirty, I'll show off Ace because I think it's the one that people haven't seen. Most people have seen the others because you get them between Alchemist and Sorcerer one way or another. And then we'll go to the final dialogue line. If I don't get sub five and a half hours, I think I will go and sit in a corner and think about what I've done. Since for that to happen now, I would have to mess up this one as well, and we are We are A rank, sub 1200. Level 39, but we'll get we'll get master by like 50 something. Board can change really quickly, but we're in a. In terms of ranking, we're in a much better place than last time. A plus already. This could actually be a really good run. I say really good run. Okay, this is a really bad run. This could be a really good survival round. Really good considering that we didn't start off with two throw big hinds. We must have decent luck this time. And especially given I haven't been focusing on chains at all, we must have had a bit of luck getting those because I wasn't trying to set those up. I think two mount, uh, chains of two, so even if you don't get the flashy bit, they'll count towards that total, but I'm not sure. Total is the, the score.
Because there's definitely points where I've ranked up after. A lot of points where I've ranked up after getting two bursts before. My nose is also completely blocked now. I'm not like <laughs> not like whole blocked. I mean like whatever dust I stirred up earlier blocked. See, A plus plus at like one four hundred. We will get it probably before one thousand seven hundred. Pulling it now. I'm trying not to sound too nasal. Uh, but maybe that's another comfort for next time. Making sure that I tidy my room way before doing the run so there's no so much dust in the air. I have a mini hoover, but I usually sweep things up because I don't like the sound of hoovers. I'm basically a dog when it comes to hoovers. Okay, we're in a really good position. I probably can't mess this up. I mean, I don't want to jinx it, but we're, we're like a hundred bursts off and this is the board. So I don't want to, I don't want to prematurely celebrate, but I'm slightly more relaxed now. We'll get the sub, we'll get the sub five and a half. I guess I have to try and be more relaxed. Otherwise, I definitely will mess up again. I have to tell myself it's going to be easy. Come on, master. Nearly there. There we go. That's time. Oh god. Five hours and a quarter. It could have been less than five. Still. I have identified several places where that I am saving time next time. Oh, oh yeah, first brown gem that you'll have seen, if you've not seen Ace before. <laughs> right. Low IQ, it's the story of my life. That's what I was missing. Oh no. That's me. Got everything except IQ. Okay, if you've not seen a brown gem before, that was the brown gem falling animation. Why is it a brown gem? Because Ace is a different colour from all the other gems. It is a 66 cost gem. And it is the only gem that is brown. Only magic gem that is brown. 
So, it's cost of 66. Usually to burst it, you have to get three of them in a row because um, there's nothing else brown you can burst on. Sort of. I am going for the mech's strategy here to burst it. We're going to Meteor Burst that ace. Uh, if you've not seen Ace before, this is probably going to be slightly confusing. Uh, your first thought when you're hearing that you need three aces. I'll give the... Sorry, I just looked at his board. <laughs> That's the worst board to burst Meteor on. So Meteor bursts very reclined like a normal gem. And it also bursts if it lands on an empty square. I just... Meteored his board when one of the squares was empty and all the rest of the squares are the same height, so the next time he dropped a gem, all the meteors burst. Which is why I reset. I don't want to do this against anyone who's not dead weight because I just want to make sure that I get it. Well, the way I guess Jinx is a candidate because she uses meteor normally. <laughs> Okay, back to the ace explanation. Meteor bursting ace. So your first thought when you see ace might be that, okay, if I need to get three of them in order to get a single usage of it, then the best thing I can do is use X2. And that's a good thought. That is one of the things that I'm doing here. I will be using X2 to get two uh, meteors at once. No, to get two aces at once. But I will also be using Meteor and Exchange. Because... You may have noticed that Meteor drops brown gems. Which are non-magic. But they're the right colour to burst ace on. Which technically means that Meteor Exchange Ace is the cheapest way to burst Ace. And there are actually two in a row that I could burst Ace on right now. I went for the X2 strap because it's slightly more reliable. When you use Meteor in Exchange, it does not guarantee you'll get two Meteors sitting in a row like that. Especially as I need 66 to get a single burst of it. Don't you dare lose before I, before I get all the gems dead weight. If he ends up losing before I even get enough gems to cast it. I'm leaving one of the meteors exposed so that I know... I know I've got two of a kind coming. I'm going to leave one exposed so that I can. Burst the two brown gems in it. Um, <laughs> he's nearly lost anyway. The disadvantage of doing this on dead weight. Okay, there we go. Here we go. You can actually still lose after this, by the way. That's Ace. The Ace's description is gives a guaranteed win. I'm going to switch back to regular strats to get two pinch. It's not actually true. Because in CPU, you can... If you get a draw against the CPU, it counts as them winning. And because the animation is so long, it like raises their field. It's like... It works like up, but it does 11... 11 raises. Because the animation takes so long, you can actually lose. You stop paying attention. Before it's finished raising the, uh, their field. 
what happened to me the first time I ever did an ace. I thought, oh, I've won this now. I stopped playing and I ended up losing because I had a really high column that hit the top. Well, it was still, the animation was still going. I am not salty about it at all. The last thing Pinch told us was that there was actually the secret secret 25th gem. Ready? Go. I'm gonna build up suspense for what she's gonna say. It's not that exciting, it's one one extra line of dialogue. Usually the pinch win battle dialogue's the same each time except for that one line. That changes depending on how many gems you have. How many unique gems you have. Uh, I've just been thinking about how long this video is going to take to encode. I am still dedicated GPU-less. I'm still waiting for the prices to come down a bit after the shortage. I guess it's not true. I do have a dedicated GPU. It is worse than my integrated GPU. But I'm not looking forward to getting it to re-encode a five and a half hour video. I can't believe I didn't talk about what a jam all the songs in this are. the other thing. Um, I wanted to talk about Link Battles. They have a completely different sound. A song that you don't hear anywhere else. It's way more loopy than the rest of the songs you get. But I assume that is also to save on the file size when you're playing single player Link Battle. Even though the music gets played in single and double Link Battles. He didn't use his vacuum. Oh, not a surprise, he put it in the corner. What a silly sausage. I am beating. So yeah, Ace isn't actually useful, <laughs> like really in any of these situations. Even if it wasn't a weird colour, it would be pretty hard to justify using it. Just because it's like 66 is a lot compared to all the other gems. Exchange is like 42. I think. About that. Even with a single meteor exchange ace, which is the easiest way to do it, that's still a lot more. You'd be better off just using the exchange. Yes. 
the only thing that can really justify it is maybe if your opponent is using Meteor and you know your opponent's using Meteor, maybe you could justify using it. But even then, it's not great. And all it does is nerf. Wow, well, it doesn't really nerf. It makes Meteor worse than it already was. And Meteor wasn't great. Begin with. Drop on the right. Oh, drop straight down. Perfect. Now she's going to drop straight down and lose. There we go. Yes. I always have... Well, <laughs> I didn't during Deadweight fight, but you usually keep one eye on the opponent's side of the field to work out where they're placing at. Your Princess Pinch. Really, you're the beads was... Still surprised after this many... Me fights. What? You've collected all the magic gems? Ah, do you finally caught up to me? There we go. <laughs> I'll collect them first to remember that. There we go. The one line of dialogue that you get at the end of the game. We finally caught up to her. Well, if she's saying that she's as good as me, given after how I play today, I think it's more of an insult to her. The line of dialogue after that saying that she'll collect them first makes absolutely no sense. But there we go. That's the game. That's everything. I am going to have a nap. I will run this again in the future, but for now, thanks for watching and bye!